What is tying the knot in Islam? We hear the term tying the knot. It's English. It's terminology that is used. It's not because a person is tied down, for example, perhaps jailed for a lifetime. So they are now tied down. You know, they say tying the knot. Some people tie it so tight that it actually breaks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. And some people have it so loose like a shoelace. Small movement and it's out. So we need to know how to tie this knot correctly in a way that we are filled with blessings. We have an opportunity to engage in acts of worship that we did not have an opportunity to engage in before tying the knot. This is a gift of Allah. When you are not yet married, you don't have the rights of a spouse to fu fulfill and for them to be fulfilled for you. But once you marry, you have in-laws, mashallah, you need to fulfill their rights. You have, you will perhaps have children. May Allah bless those who do not have children with children. I mean, you would have a spouse whom you need to take care of. They become first class citizens of the heart. That's how it should be. Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ from among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has kept for you from amongst you your spouses or a spouse and Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala in order that you may achieve from your spouse you will perhaps Allah has blessed you with Allah has instilled in the heart love and Allah has instilled mercy this is what should be a result of a nikah a result of the officiation of the marriage in Islam I'm supposed to feel immediate connection such that I feel the love I feel the mercy I, I care for my spouse and it should be upon the highest level this is your spouse. With the spouse, you will have children. These children will be part of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Having children is a great responsibility. Subhanallah, we need the globe to progress. Reproduction is part of the plan of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, which is only correct if the couple were married. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us all. And it is our duty to be the role models for our own children to start with. Yes, it's good enough to tell our children, mashallah, this is a good person to follow. This is a lovely role model. But if we are not role models ourselves for our own children, then we are faltering. We are making a huge mistake. This is why cut out your bad habits. The fact that you are getting married immediately, you need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, when I say once again, I mean a mu'min and a believer should be such that throughout his or her life, he constantly turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayrul khatta'een at-tawwaboon. All the children of Adam are prone to error. They make mistakes. They commit sin. But the best from amongst those who sin, you know the term khatta means oft sinning. A person who sins time and time again, meaning time and again, the person is sinning. So Allah says, a person who sins often, what would make him the best of the lot? One who repents often as well. One who turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Al-Khatta is someone who makes a lot of mistakes. May Allah never make us from amongst those who commit sin with the hope of being, of achieving mercy. Because sometimes when we don't understand the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can drive us to commit a sin because we don't understand it. So we say, let me commit the sin. Now I'm young. When I'm a little bit older, I will go for Hajj. And when I go for Hajj, I will ask Allah's forgiveness. And then Allah will forgive me. What if you die tomorrow before you went for Hajj and before you repented? This is why. A day should not pass by without you asking Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. I am human. I am weak. Ya Allah, grant me goodness. Grant me forgiveness. Be pleased with me. Strengthen me. Grant me the strength to obey you. Make it difficult for me to sin. Make the dua. And you will find it will become difficult for you to sin. Oh Allah, create a barrier between me and sin. And oh Allah, whenever there is a good deed, make it easy for me. Make the dua from your heart. You will find that inshallah, there will come a time when you will be able to stay away from sin with ease, you're asking Allah for help.
Yes, it is in the hands of Allah. Allah has given you the capacity. But at the same time, the acceptance to do what is right also lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are rights that are to be fulfilled of a spouse. Before you were married, you didn't have the spouse. So perhaps you didn't understand the obligation. I was making mention of how the children are such a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's no point to say my daughter is gorgeous and the way you dress her is totally against the instruction of Allah. Who gave you the daughter? Who gave you the son? What type of school have you sent your child to? We are not saying you need to send your child to a school where the education is unacceptable, but something where the moral values are also held up. The child comes out with responsibility, respect, knowing how to speak, knowing how to abstain from the evil that is being advertised across the globe today. We have drugs, for example, that are being pumped across the globe. And some say there's nothing wrong with this drug. You know what? It's legal. It should be okay. What's wrong? It gives you a bit of a kick and so what? Well, if I were to give you a kick right now, it would hurt your bottoms. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. A drug cannot be good if we are telling you that a cigarette is not good. What do you think marijuana is? It's worse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really. If we are telling you a cigarette is not good and the doctors are saying so, the medicine is saying so, then you should learn to give it up for the sake of Allah. Perhaps that will be your entry into Jannah. You left something for what? For the sake of Allah. The problem with us, we will leave it for the sake of our health. I'm not saying it's wrong to leave it for the sake of your health, but you can convert abstention into an act of worship by intending the correct intention. I'm leaving it for the sake of Allah. And if you do that for the sake of Allah, naturally your health will also be protected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So cut out the bad habits as you are growing older. You will have children. These children need to look up to you, my dad, my mom. But daddy is still busy doing things he's not supposed to do. Dad is still a child. He needs to grow up. Subhanallah. 30 years old and you find people saying, grow up, man. Grow up. I'm grown. I'm fully grown. Grow up in your head, in your mind, in your character, in your conduct, in your deed, in your relation with Allah. That is growing up. Otherwise, to grow like wild grass, that everyone, it happens with everyone. My son, 14 years old, taller than me. Mashallah, he's grown up size wise. Mashallah. But whether that is a wise size, I don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is something important. Today, they are taller than us. One wonders what they are eating and what's happening. Well, it's us who are buying the food for them. I always used to say, are you sure there is no fertilizer in your shoes? Something's happening. You know, they shoot up far taller than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. What a big responsibility. If you're not prepared to spend time with your children, why did you have children? If you're not prepared to spend time with your wife, if you're too embarrassed to take her somewhere and to spend time with her, quality time, why did you get married? Why did you waste somebody's life? If you don't want to talk to her correctly, why did you marry? Why did you take someone else's daughter? Subhanallah, this is someone's child. The same applies to the females. If you really did not want to speak properly to your husband, why did you marry? You should have been honest. You should have been upright. You should have said so from the beginning that look, I'm marrying you. But to be honest with you, I will just look at you without talking. May Allah help us really. You need to smile and the smile is an act of worship when it comes to your fellow Muslimin, you know, your brethren. You smile, you break into a beautiful smile. Mashallah, you know, you smile. Imagine if a smile is an act of worship when it comes to fellow human beings. What about when it is your own spouse? It is a far greater act of worship. You need to show your teeth to your spouse. And when you grow older, you can show your dentures too. Mashallah, really. Subhanallah. For as long as you smile and you know, you just smile, look at them, admire them from top to toe, look twice, thrice. She is not a woman whom you need to lower your gaze from, but you don't look at her. Allahu Akbar. But the others, we look at them head to toe, head to toe. And we go to the sheikh saying that was only one gaze. I didn't look away. Not yet. But your wife whom you are supposed to praise, you're supposed to tell her, darling, you're gorgeous. You know, you are, mashallah, figure like a trigger. The other day we used the term aerodynamic mashallah you know subhanallah beautiful you see the shapes of the motor vehicles are changing every year subhanallah may allah bless us we will praise the shape of the new c class and say wow that's a baby s class i'm sure you know what i'm talking about well look at your wife and tell her mashallah you are my baby 
It's an act of worship. If you are not going to say these beautiful words, your knot is probably going to break. To be honest with you, that knot would be so loose that you can't even say a good word. Every time you say a good word, you're actually making sure the knot is tight. So my brothers and sisters, make sure the knot is tight enough. It mustn't loosen and it mustn't break. You know, when you are too hard, then what happens? The lace, if it is a lace, it would break. And if you are not bothered at all, then the knot is so loose that it would actually come apart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. This is why we say you will have qualities in your spouse that you may not like. It's normal. They are human beings. Human beings work on them. Do not just want out in two days, five days, one month. I recall a wedding without a joke where the nikah was done and they had the walima and the function was full of sin. May Allah forgive us really. You know, I have mentioned in the past that those who have functions of sin, when it comes to their nikah, they pay for it some, somewhere down their lives, unless they have engaged in tawbah. So sometimes, you know, people say, look, I had the wrong function when I was getting married. We had music, we had intermingling, we brought in dancers, we had so much. It was just a party. Some of them had alcohol, some of, and it's a celebration, subhanallah, of a, a great segment of your iman, subhanallah. So they say, now I'm worried. I say there is a way out. It's never too late. Even though your marriage was 30 years back, 40 years back, some people are paying in the form of their children disobeying them because the day they tied the knot, they disobeyed Allah. So now they say, why is my child so disobedient? And I go back and say, brother, the day you got married, was there a big ball where people were dancing and Allah was, you know, forgotten. And they look at you and say, what do I do? Now my children are forgetting me. They don't want to know me. But brother, you went wrong. The day you were getting married, if you did it correctly, you listen to Allah. Allah will give you children who will listen to you. Simple. So now what's the solution? We already did it wrong 30 years ago, 20 years ago. I need a solution. Allah's love for us is such that there is a solution. What is the solution? Oh Allah, when I got married, I did it wrong. Forgive me, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, grant me forgiveness and open my doors. And Allah says, my worshiper, my creature, I love you so much. At least now you've realized what you did was wrong. I forgive you. Subhanallah. You can make amends. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Something I did that was wrong in the past. It, me, it requires me to understand that Allah's mercy is greater than my sin. Definitely. Allah's mercy is greater than any sin. Subhanallah. It, it is only if a person dies in the condition of shirk and association of partnership with Allah that they need to be worried. Otherwise, we have a Rabb, we have a Lord who is most forgiving for as long as we try, we try. You know, you can't have a youngster coming to you and saying, okay, so I'm on drugs, but I just heard Allah is most forgiving. Allah's mercy is bigger than my drug. No, don't fool yourself. Perhaps technically you are correct, but you are tempering with the wrath of Allah, with the anger of Allah. This is something we need to understand. So this is why we say we will have bad habits sometimes or habits that might not be ideal we might have a small irritation you know a person sometimes may not know how to handle a woman and a woman may not know how to handle a man the nature is a little bit different we know that so sometimes a woman prefers to remain silent for a while and you can't just get excited and agitated and irritated and you better talk to me and you lift her up <laughs> what are you doing you tightening that not so much it's about to break and it will break by the time you put her down there's no knot left really Tie the knot correctly for the sake of Allah. She is someone's daughter. Would you like someone to do that to your daughter, your mother, your sister? The answer is no. So watch out. Treat her correctly. She has a nature. If you don't know how to handle a woman, go for classes prior to marriage. We encourage the ulama here to have marriage classes, really. Coaching. What should I do? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness because how to treat the opposite sex and to know their temperament, to know what they may or may not, you know, what you will find in the opposite sex, important, very, very important. Some of us, you know, we know, we know nothing. The last thing, subhanallah, you get married and you think I'm the boss. That's it. Boss? Boss is a perfume for all I care. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. If you are boss, you will be sprayed and you'll be sprayed all over the show, my brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Remember this. This is Allah. This is a gift of Allah upon you. You need to treat a person like a gift. Like I say, be patient. Work on them. Mashallah. You know when you have, when you have a diamond, where do you find it? 
you will have to mine. When you find it initially, it's all mixed up with stone. You won't know the difference. And you, then you need an expert to tell you how many carat this is. Can you tell yourself if you haven't studied? No, you'll probably throw the stone away. And one man says, hey, hang on, this is a diamond. The same applies in marriage. We want to marry stones sometimes without realizing there is nothing here. And sometimes we leave those that we think are stones just because our parents have told us, you know what, marry here. It's not wrong for your parents to guide you. Remember this. I have to qualify what I said yesterday. Remember this. It is not wrong for your parents to guide you in marriage. In fact, it is their duty to guide you. The problem, we were guided already at the age of 11 and we've already fixed our eyes on someone over. Before the parents came, we've already sealed the matter. Father says, son, would you like to get married? Daughter, would you like to get married? And you say, yes, I was waiting for the question. And then he comes up and says, okay, I've got a very good idea for you. I've got some really good proposals or I've got an idea for you. Perhaps you can listen to me, but dad, I don't mean that type of marriage. Why? I've got someone in my own mind. Okay, in that case, dad, you did not involve yourself correctly in the life of your child. So your child has made big decisions without you. You are also to share the blame. Do not deny it. If you had a powerful friendship with your child, the minute he met or she met the opposite sex, he or she would come home that day and say, dad, you know what? I met someone and you say, watch out, be careful. You need to know this and know that you are able to talk to them. The problem with us, no communication. Child comes from school. We don't even ask, what did your madam say? You know, what did the teacher say? What happened at school today? Nothing. He is scared to even sit on the same table as dad because dad is sitting there. You don't know how hard I work to send you to school. You don't know how much money I have spent. You don't know. I have sweated my backside off. You probably say, dad, get up. Let me see. May Allah forgive us, really. So that is the relationship we have in the home where it's cat and mouse. We don't even speak to our children. But if you embrace your child, you learn to kiss your child, you learn to have a relationship with your child. Oh, my beloved child, my son, my daughter, subhanAllah. And you do not just shout the child for a mistake that a child has made. Just like you do not shout a spouse for a mistake they have made. Some of us for food, we make such a big issue that the knot breaks. Your spouse burnt the food. Mashallah, today we had some beautiful food. This time I've been eating a lot in Colombo. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant us ease. You know, I was thinking, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the food of Jannah. One wonders if there is such beautiful food. What about Jannah? What will there be? Subhanallah. In order to get there, you need to make sure you are the best to your spouse. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The hadith says the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. Subhanallah. Best to their family members, best to your spouse, best to your husband. How do you treat them? Some people, the wife has burnt the food. Do you know that's a test from Allah? That's a test from Allah. He's watching. And to be honest with you, the angels are writing. What's your reaction? That's all that's happening. Nothing else. She might never burn it again. And we get up and say, do you know how much money is wasted here? Do you know this food is rubbish? It's rotten. It's bad. It's filthy. Throw it out. Is that the attitude? Well, why did you get married? That is someone's daughter. How are you speaking to her? Have a bit of shame. Your children are watching. If you have committed a crime, that is one thing, but you are teaching your children how to commit a crime that they will commit in a bigger way. This is why I encourage people who want to get married. If you want to get married to someone, go and look at their parents. Look at how they are living. If their parents are living correctly with beauty, with respect, with honor, it would mean that they have learned beauty, respect and honor. But if their parents are fighting like cats and dogs, and if their parents are swearing each other, and there is a relationship that is totally absurd, then it does not mean the child is bad. No, it doesn't. But there is a likelihood that the child might have qualities of that nature, especially if it's a male. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's not a rule, but it is something we need to consider. It is something we need to think about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to mend our ways and habits in such a way that they do not seep through to the next generation. This knot is a blessed knot, subhanallah. It is to be tied for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when tying the knot in Islam, when tying the knot in Islam, you will find very clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy and he's asked us to say a few good words. That is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
every time there was a nikah, there was an officiation of a marriage, we find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say a few good words, you know, advice to those who are not married, to those who have come together, perhaps to those who are still waiting. He would say, Ya ma'ashara shabab, man istata'a minkumul ba'ata, falyatazawwaj. Oh youth, whoever is able and capable to get married, do not waste time, don't delay, let you should get married. It's a, it's a piece of advice. And mashallah, you see your friend and he's excited. He's sitting there and you know, he's saying, mm, I'm about to say yes to the Imam, subhanallah. So now he looks up and he says, uh, the Imam is asking, have you accepted? He says, yes, yes. It happened to me once where, and I, I mentioned it uh, not too long ago as well, where there was a youngster so excited. And I'm busy telling myself, son, I hope you're ex as excited as today, as you are today, one year down the line. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. Today we cry. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, you know, a goodness and make this bond solid. They say triple X glue. You know why they call it triple X? If I were to tell you this video is triple X, what does it mean? I think everyone knows what it means. It means it's no go area. You, you will hurt yourself. You will harm yourself. Don't watch it. Leave it. Triple X. This is something X rated. Imagine the glue is not X-rated, it's double, triple X. They call it triple X glue. When you tie the knot, it should be with triple X glue. There is no haram that is there besides very, very little. And that too, you would have to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. That's your woman. You are intimate with her. That's your man. That's your husband. You are intimate with this person. You can talk to them. You can undress in their presence. Subhanallah, whatever you'd like within the limits of Allah, you can get it done. Mashallah, there is nothing X-rated there because that is your spouse. What a blessed knot. Allah tells you, yes, we know you have needs. We know you have desires. We know you have a lot within you that is there, that is instilled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will show you a dignified manner of fulfillment of this. We will show you a respectful, respectable manner of fulfillment of this. And believe me, it is a give and take, not just a take and take. Allahu Akbar. It's a give and take. People sometimes think that, you know, my wife should do as I say. No, sometimes you should do as she says as well, where you are wrong and she's right. She has the right to correct you. In fact, it is her duty to correct you. You are the spouse. She will earn Jannah if she corrects you, getting you up for Salah. Don't just think I'm a, I'm a husband. Don't you dare get me up. You're interrupting my sleep. She has the right to pour water on your face, my brother. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. Getting up for salah, it's the duty of your spouse to get you up for salah. She is sinful if she doesn't. So sometimes you have to listen to your wife as well. She has the right to say things. She is a human being. So she might have a better brain than yours. Admit, admit. Hey, the men are looking at me today. I see what's happening. No, subhanallah, it's a reality. She might come up with better ideas than yours. She might be more qualified than you are in terms of religious knowledge and various other things. She might know how to handle the, the home better than you. She might come up with ideas. Look at Khadija bint Khawaili radiallahu anha. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the highest. No competition, no debate. Like we said moments ago, never ever a bad habit or an evil quality from the beginning all the way to the end. Perfect, subhanallah, in every way. Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was made up of what the Quran teaches completely. But he used to listen to his spouse sometimes because that was a teaching, not because anything was wrong. I give you an example. Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha at the time of revelation, what did she do? When he said, Zammiluni or Dattiruni, you know, cover me, envelop me. She embraced her husband and she offered support. This is why at the time of difficulty, offer your spouse support either way. Husband to wife, wife to husband, offer her support. You don't have to say, listen, I got nothing to do with this. I'm out of here. Subhanallah. That's your spouse. You offer them support. You tell them, look, don't worry. She says, Kalla wallahi la Allahu abadan. Never. Allah will never let you down. Allah will never disgrace you, never embarrass you. You are such a good man. How many of us can tell about our wives? or our husbands that they are such good men or women and tell it to someone else altogether. Meaning, are we able to do that? You might tell your wife, oh, you're so lovely. And, and, and you're saying, oh, it was quite hard to say that. <laughs> be genuine, be honest. Look at the, look at how lovely she really is. 
It is character, it is conduct, it is sacrifice. Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha says, I have an idea. Let's go to my cousin, this Waraka bin Naufal. Let's go to him. Perhaps he will come up with something. Perhaps he will know. So she thought up ideas. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not have to listen to her. Subhanallah. But he walked with her. He went out with her. He heard and subhanallah, he came back. What do we learn from that? We are not like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not prophets of Allah. We are nowhere near. We are imperfect mortals. We are imperfect human beings who make mistakes every day. But we don't want to have, we don't want to lend an ear to a spouse whom we've married, subhanallah, whom we've actually married. And she's just giving us an idea to say, look, I believe maybe you should resolve the matter this way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he open our doors. My brothers and sisters, the responsibilities within marriage are such that it is, it has become today like walking on a tightrope. That was not supposed to be the case, but today it's like walking on a tightrope because we have technology that comes to interfere with the knot. We have the environment that comes to interfere with the knot. We have so many things that come to interfere with that knot. So how you use your phone would actually break the knot or tighten it thoroughly, properly, meaning it would reinforce it. If you have the correct use of your mobile phone, correct use of your eyes, that would also strengthen your marriage. Imagine, imagine there is a nude woman walking past and like I said, figure like a trigger. Do you know why they call it like a trigger? You know, you pull a bit and you are shot. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really. Tamper with it and the bullet goes straight through. Allahu Akbar. So remember, imagine if there is a woman who's walking past and she's absolutely nude. Your wife is with you and she's watching. And you look down and you don't even look up. And she looks at you and looks there. Wallahi, she will feel in her heart, hey, this man, mashallah. You know, he, and then you look at her a little bit later and you say, mashallah, darling, you're gorgeous, mashallah, gorgeous. Today we heard a new word, aerodynamic, mashallah. Wow. You know, BMW does not stand for be my wife. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May he bless us. Really. I hope looking down was out of the fear of Allah and not out of the fear of your spouse. May Allah bless us. So we cause it. You will never get to the woman who walked by, but you said a lot about yourself. You made a huge statement to your spouse that, you know what? I don't look at you this way, but I... <laughs> Allah forgive us. Really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from temptation. Don't think you are too grand and powerful and strong. Anyone can fall. Ask Allah to help you, to protect you from temptation. Ask him and ask him every day and he will protect you. Allahumma adfa' anna al-ghala wal-waba wal-riba wal-zina wal-zalazila wal-mihan wa su al-fitani ma dhahara minha wa ma batan. The dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam includes the dua, O oh Allah, take away from us, keep far from us certain things, inflation and this and that, and one of them is zina. Keep away from us, Ya Allah. I'm a human being. I don't want to fall. Ya Allah, keep it away from me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Trust me, we achieve nothing from adultery and fornication. We achieve lots of goodness through our own relations, our spouses, our children, mashallah, spend time at home. It brings me to another point. We get married, we have kids. We have a function of this nature, mashallah. And you know, mashallah, it's an important function. There are so many brothers and sisters who've attended in your thousands, mashallah. May Allah bless us all. Like I say, may he gather us like this on the day of Qiyamah, inshallah, in the right camp. And may we be granted Jannah. Amen. So what happens? We come and your friends phone you. So are you going? Say, I'm going. Okay, let's go together. Who is a real man? Is he who can say, sorry, my buddy, I'm going with my wife. That's a man. The others are all little, they, they are scared of their friends and losing their friendship. They want to be called men when they are not men. A true man is he who knows how to treat his family. That's what a true man is. Are you a true man? Really, if you want to know, it does not mean how much money you have. You know, today I was sitting, I was seeing people and subhanAllah, I learned a lot. And I le one of the things I learned is that a rich man is not he who has a lot of wealth. No, you've got a lot of wealth. That is not the gauge of whether you are rich or not in Islam. In Islam, a rich man is he who can spend that wealth. 
So you judge a person based on how much he has spent or he will be judged based on how much he has spent even by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the point of amassing, amassing, amassing? What's the point? I haven't yet spent it. Let me earn my paradise. Let me spend left, right and center. Subhanallah. That is a true wealthy person. So similarly, a true man is he who knows what a family is all about. Allah made you a man and made the other a woman in order for you to get together in marriage and be able to reproduce for the sake of Allah in order to increase the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the point of reproducing like popcorn when you don't even know what your children are doing? Allahu Akbar, you don't know, you have no time. I've got money and that's it. And let me just have as many kids as I want. So we've got 25 kids, none of them know what Islam is all about. What was the point? So this is why quality is far more important than quantity. Remember this. And if you are a real man, you will know that your spouse comes first. Really, first as in the human beings that are around you. So much so that if there is politics between your mother and your spouse, you will not disrespect your mother but some people misinterpret the term kindness to the mother as meaning obey her even when she is wrong your mother is a human being a lovely human being yes we did say you serve her we did say you will be kind to her mashallah but when she's making a mistake you must be a man to say mom i love you so much but you know what this is wrong man you cannot do this mom Please don't do this. You are messing up things and don't go and say my wife complained to me about you because now you're messing a relationship. You're not a politician. Learn from the politicians around you. Mashallah. They know how to play the politics. Really, you need to be a politician to be able to hold that knot properly. You need to be one. You need to be able. Like I said, it's become a tightrope. The reason why we say it's become a tightrope is people have lost the value of what Islam teaches. They don't want to follow. If all of us were following what the deen teaches, including our mothers and fathers, our spouses and everyone else, then it would be a simple walk. It still happens in some homes. May Allah bless us and increase the number of homes where there is harmony and peace and goodness, subhanAllah. But in a lot of homes, sadly, today life is all about TV and materialism and the internet and WhatsApp and the phone and social media and whatever else we've been speaking about all along. Subhanallah, people have removed Allah from the equation. Sometimes we have people who think Islam is reduced to salah and to a dress code. So you have a nice long beard, mashallah, you're wearing hijab and niqab perhaps, and you read five salah a day. And you think that I'm a good Muslim. No way. No way. That is a part of Islam indeed, but it's not just Islam. That is not just what it is. That's not all that Islam has. No, Islam has a lot and a lot more than this. Subhanallah. You need to pray. You need to ask Allah. You need to develop your character, your conduct. You have fulfilled your right towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it was direct between you and Allah. What about the rights of fellow human beings? Guess where it starts? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qū anfusakum wa ahlīkum nāra O you who believe, save yourselves and then your family members from the fire, from hellfire. It would mean that if I want to be good and kind, I need to start with my own spouse, my children and I need to stand up for what is correct. That's a man. Subhanallah. Even if you're a woman and your parents are maltreating your spouse, your husband, you should be good enough to say, I am kind to my mother, my father. I, I am really good to them. I do not harm them. I respect them. But at the same time, what I need to know is communicate with them that how you are treating the spouse of your of mine is wrong. You need to say it. Allahu Akbar. Many women are suffering at the hands of the mothers of their husbands. Solely because the husband doesn't have the courage to be a man. And we are not saying be rude. Remember, kindness is a duty and obligation. You need to respect your mother. But with respect and kindness, you need to understand she is just but a human being. She also has her weaknesses. You know, the best of people can fall. The best of people from amongst us can make mistakes. The most knowledgeable from amongst us can make mistakes. Subhanallah. But to correct them in a beautiful way, it doesn't mean that, you know what, uh, that's it. I must go and swear my mother. No, we need to address the situation correctly with utmost respect. And this is when we will be able to consolidate what we have. You know, the spouses who respect their spouses are those whom when they have a difficulty, the spouse is the first to rush to their assistance. Subhanallah, the first to rush to your help. 
And as time passes, do you know what will affect you? The sacrifice. The sacrifice that you have made for your spouse is what will increase you in value. And the sacrifice that your spouse has made for you is what will increase him or her in value. So you need to sacrifice. What did I sacrifice? Not just my wealth, not just my time, but my kindness, meaning I need to be kind, my heart. I need to say good words. And I'm encouraging even the older people to go and try it out. It works. The other day I was talking to one person rough, roughly my age. And we were saying, you know, our fathers, I, I don't think our fathers told our mothers, I love you even once, but they loved each other tremendously more than we who say, I love you 20 times a day. But I tell you what, if your parents are still alive, I hope they're listening. Try it out. Go and say, I love you. And that's not how you say it. You don't just go and say, I love you. And then you walk out. No, there is a way. Like I said, there is tajweed for everything. Subhanallah. I love you. Subhanallah. <laughs> that holds much more weight than I love you. Tajweed. You know, say it correctly, properly. Mashallah. That's your spouse. You can say it how you want. You can flick your eyes and blink them and do whatever you want. That's your spouse. Come on. The value of that speech is such that you can, you know, beautify it. You want to add a tashdeed? No problem. You want to add a mud? No problem. You want to do ghunna and ikhfa? No problem. That's your spouse. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. You know? You want to sing a song for them? Why not? Say, look, my darling, I prepared a song for you. I love you. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> What's wrong? That's the knot. May Allah bless us all. My brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong in Islam to do that. It's your spouse. But the problem with us, we will send messages with these emoticons, you know, in, on WhatsApp, there's a heart. When you send it, it, it actually blows up a little bit and it starts, it starts pumping. Have you seen it? Mashallah, I heard quite a lot of yeses. I hope you're sending them to the right people, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I hope you are, really. It's a beautiful heart. But how, how many times do you send it to your spouse? I don't think your spouse will become upset by you sending it even on auto send. Every 10 minutes, a heart goes out. I don't think they would become upset. You know why? There is no auto send on WhatsApp. It has to have been you. We send it. Yes, we do. We use emoticons. We use the love. We, we, we use the little, you know, those thick red stubby lips that come on WhatsApp, you know, and we use them and send them here and there. Subhanallah, without ever kissing, without ever doing anything. And we've, but the problem is we are sending it to the wrong person. We are sending it to someone and that sending has been encouraged by shaitan. I'm not saying the person is bad. No, am I saying you are bad, but shaitan is very bad. So shaitan says, no, your wife, come on, you don't need. Wallahi, you get to work, phone your wife. Hey, listen, darling, I'm at work. Everything is okay, mashallah. The sandwiches you made are really, really great. Make sure she did put sandwiches in there, mashallah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're in trouble. She'll tell you that, hey, where did these sandwiches come from? I didn't put them. <laughs> but give her the call. Tell her, mashallah, when you eat, say, mashallah, the food was excellent. It was very good. MashaAllah, we thank Allah and I thank you for the effort. This is how it works. Your husband comes back, he comes home, he buys you something, he does something for you. Thank him. Say, oh, I really appreciate it. Count the favors of the husband. Do you know one of the sins of women that are made mention of by Muhammad sallallahu is that sometimes they do not appreciate what's done for them. They're quick to forget. But the same applies to men. We are quick to forget what, what the women do for us as well. And we treat them as though, you know what, by the way, I heard one man, and it's a fact, I'm a counselor myself. You know, we try to help as many as we can. But once there was a problem between certain people and you know, our mothers are really good people. They don't mean to interfere, but sometimes there's a generation gap. So a generation gap means, you know, when there's more than 30, 40 years gap between people, they don't understand each other properly. You know, so sometimes when they don't, they, they say things and the other one hasn't understood and she will say things and the mother hasn't understood and so on. So there was a problem. And to be honest with you, the mother was more wrong in that particular case that I was dealing with. And the man says, listen, a mother I will, I, I will never replace, but a wife, there are dozens outside waiting to marry me. I looked at him and I said, do you fear Allah? Do you fear Allah? Do you want to be with the same mother in Jannah? Subhanallah. If that's the case, if she, your statement is correct, technically speaking, but as a Muslim, you should not be saying that because your mother is irreplaceable. That does not make it such that when she's wrong, 
that wrong is also irreplaceable. You can replace the wrong with right. Tell him, my mom, I love you. I can't replace you. You are my mother. Allah chose you for me. You are a test for me. But my beloved mother, do you know what? In this instance, you were wrong. Or get someone like me to tell your mother that, you know what? You are wrong. Really? Get a scholar. Get someone else whom she respects to correct her. And I've been and I've done this in certain homes where you, in, you tell the person, look, this is the problem. Please let your daughter live or let your son live without interfering, so to speak. And sometimes my young spouses, it's not interference. It is guidance. We mix the two up. They are guiding you. Like we said, it's their duty to guide you. If your mother sees you as a, a, a man, you were a good man, used to get up for Salatul Fajr, read Quran. Now that you married, everything stopped. She has every right. In fact, it's her duty as married as you are and as many children as you may have. It's her duty to tell you, listen, my son, you will get up for salah. You will. But she mustn't say, and this is a mistake many women make. Ever since you got married, that woman, I don't know what she does to you at night. You can't even get up for salah. Mom, you know what we do at night. Come on. <laughs> it's not like it's haram. I don't have to be shy about it. May Allah forgive us, really. Imagine, I've heard this happening. You know, they come any small thing. Son has a bad habit. When my son was single, he never had that bad habit. Now that he's with you, bad habits are coming in. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. If those are words that are cutting, those are remarks that are unwarranted. Those are remarks that are not correct. A Muslim should not be saying that. You make dua for your son. Oh Allah, guide my son. Oh Allah, help my child. Allahu Akbar. Oh Allah, help me create a love between me and my daughter-in-law. Make the dua. Oh Allah, help us. Like this, anything goes wrong. You know, the mother, the nose is twitching sometimes. May Allah protect all our mothers. The wrong thing would be for her to say, I think my daughter-in-law is doing some magic on me. My nose is twitching. Your nose is twitching. Big deal. My nose twitches. No one did anything on you. It's just a little, perhaps blood circulation, something wrong, something here, there. It's normal. You, everyone's nose twitches once in a while, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Don't think negative. You want that not to be intact. Don't think negative. Think positive. That is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has tested you through that. So this is why we say, learn to respect one another. Become role models for your own children. Learn to stand up for your spouse when someone is wrong, whether it's in your home or out of your home. Don't allow them to be trampled by anyone and everyone. And never ever think that your spouse is an unpaid maid. A lot of people are happy. You're getting married. Ooh, we're going to have good food here. Hey, mashallah. Ooh, is she just a cook? If she likes to do it and she doesn't mind, alhamdulillah, mashallah, what a wife. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless us. Beautiful. But you can't just say, guys, no more worries. All my friends, every night you can come home. No problem. Who, who's going to prepare? My wife. Your wife is not married to your friends, my brothers. Your wife is your spouse. Yes, she may want to spoil you, but remember she's a human being, not a machine. The same applies to your husband, my beloved sisters. He's not a machine. He is a human being. He will falter. He will make mistakes. You know, I normally tell people that when you want to know everything about your spouse, the knot will break. Listen to what I just said. People say, I want to know every detail. You are not Allah. My answerability is not to you. I swear I have come across instances where a man or a woman have faulted in life a big mistake the spouse did not know they came crying to the scholars or to the masjid and they repented and they became better people and you think to yourself the spouse didn't know that's why they are really really happy because the man has become a better person than he was before the mistake he made but if the spouse found out environment teaches the spouse to say husband made a mistake kick him out so now she is depressed he is depressed. And what happened? It was a mistake between him and Allah. It had nothing to do with you. So you say, I want to know every detail. I want to know every detail. Tell me. MashaAllah. You know, if she's standing with her hands on her hips, it's okay. Some would be standing with a stick. <laughs> May Allah help. And vice versa. The men are doing it as well. You don't need to know every detail. The sin sometimes is between them and Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to... Really, sometimes they will turn to Allah. If your spouse turns and leaves a bad habit because of you, they might get back into it. But if they've left the bad habit because of Allah, the chances of them getting back to it are very small because they did it for the sake of Allah. You know, the amount of, like we say, the environment and the amount of pressure that the environment puts on people to be promiscuous 
and to be, for example, to lose morals and values is so intense and immense that a person who is saved is really one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You walk out of this hall, what do you see? Subhanallah, there is a theater right next door. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. A person can head to the wrong direction very easily, very quickly, very tempting. The lights are flashing. It's Christmas season, end of year and so on. And the Muslimin, sometimes you find they are the ones who go to the Christmas parties. Mashallah. You know, Diwali party, Christmas party, frontline Muslims. At least some of them remove their headgear. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. So this is the pressure of society, pressure of community, pressure of the world today, the globe is such that people can falter and fall. It's your duty to help and assist. Get your spouse back up on her feet or his feet and help him walk towards Allah. That is your paradise. That is your paradise. It doesn't mean when your spouse has made one mistake, you cut the rope, you cut the knot. No, they've made a mistake. There are others who have made many more mistakes and they have helped their spouses in a way that today they are happier than they ever were in the past. And wallahi, it's a fact. Ask those who are slightly older. When their spouses made mistakes, they helped them. They did not say, right, it's the end of story. Go. I don't want you here anymore. If that's the case, and that's how we are looking at marriage, someone else will do the same thing to you or a member of your family. May Allah not do that to us. If you have a serious problem and a crisis, yes, indeed. Sometimes that not, perhaps we will want to untie it because you know what, to be honest with you, something went wrong, total incompatibility, perhaps, you know, something has happened here where the knot is broken. You know, when you become physical with your wife, you say, I'm a Muslim. Didn't you see the Quran says I can beat you? You're my wife. How did you interpret verses? The Quran said you must beat your wife. What are you talking about? Subhanallah. Do you know when you have a problem and a matter with your wife? What are the first steps? You don't even know. You don't, you haven't even learned. But we just read a verse on our own and said, hey, you know what? The translation of this is according to this. Hang on, hang on, relax. Take it easy. I know of a case where the man wanted to punch his wife and the wife finished the husband up completely. And then he came with blue eyes saying, I didn't know my wife was a boxer. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. You see, it says knowledge box. Watch out. She'll put you on a box. She'll put you in the box. Allahu Akbar. You cannot maltreat your spouse. Never. Not at all. Make sure that you understand. You have a problem. Speak. Talk to her. Use your mind, your brain. Convince her with some means. And if she has a problem with you, the same applies. She needs to talk to you. And this is a mistake some women make. Like I told you at the beginning, some women prefer to remain silent. Just to pray to Allah, perhaps. Don't ever reveal your problems to someone online. Never ever. It's the biggest mistake you could make. You're sitting behind the screen and someone says, Oh, very bad husband. They advise you wrong. They want to steal your heart at the time when you are at, on a low. No ways. They are perhaps worse than your spouse. You, you're confiding in someone. You say, no, I can confide in them because they don't know me. Trust me, they know your exact location, your name and everything. Trust me. You never ever turn to an anonymous person for help online and on your phone. They can blackmail you. They can cheat you. They can give you bad advice. And the worst of friends are those who give you advice that is wrong and they know it's wrong. Subhanallah. So this is what happens sometimes. A person goes to someone for advice and that person is wrong. They tell you, you say, you know what? My, today my, my husband really, he raised his voice and he was quite upset. No, fix him. Go home. Tell him I'm not talking to you for one month. Well, you walked out for a month. He tried speaking to you. You didn't because you followed the wrong advice. And he didn't, you didn't speak to him. Not one day, two days, five days. He found someone else to speak to after one week. And then you come back a month later thinking your problem is solved. But now there's a third party involved. Allahu Akbar. And then the person who advised you, they run away. They run away. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Your marriage broke. I'm very sorry. But your husband was a very bad man. But he's living happily ever after with someone else. We could have done it, but we didn't because we got advice from the wrong person. So when something goes wrong, seek advice from those who will tell you, my sister, mend it. Try to make it work. See how it goes. Don't worry. Let it try, try again and so on. You've tried it again. If it is oppression, extreme, you might want out. No problem. Like I'm saying, we need to balance the statement here. There are cases and incidents where there is oppression on either side. There is, you know, incompatibility beyond repair. 
So divorce is permissible as a last resort. Yes, indeed. But it's not just something that you throw just because you didn't get a hundred dollars when someone else got a hundred dollars. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes, you know, you, you find a spouse would perhaps buy a gift for someone, give someone and you say, but what about me? Where's mine? I don't want, you know, Valentine's Day for us is every day of the year. Valentine's Day, every day of the year, meaning we don't mean St. Valentine and so on, but expressing love should not just be on a certain day. But I know of Muslims whose marriages have broken because the husband did not bring a rose or a flower or a gift for the wife on the day of Valentine's. Muslims, marriage broken. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day? You, I want out. I want out. All my friends got flowers. I didn't get anything. I want out. Finish. Bad. How am I going to show face to my friends? My sister, you don't need to show face. A marriage that works is not a marriage that is displayed on Facebook. A lot of those are actually not working. That's why they have to show it on Facebook. If yours is working, you're busy working it. You're not busy on the net. Allahu Akbar. So people want to put, oh, me, my husband and I, and you're hugging and you're kissing and the picture's up. Wallahi, the evil eye is the truth. It happens, it comes. You want to show everyone how delighted you are. Tomorrow, broken. What happened? Woo! Everyone was saying, oh. <laughs> what a couple. They're getting along so well. Woo! Allahu Akbar. People forget Allah's name. And so next thing you're busy fighting and you don't know. And everyone says, oh, this marriage was made in heaven. Even the marriages made in heaven break. Allahu Akbar. Why do you have to show? Why do you have to say, oh, my love, beloved husband and speak to the globe? Tell your husband that. Subhanallah. Tell your wife that. So this is why we say, I know of another marriage that broke because the wife suspected the man of giving her flowers that were supposedly from someone else. How's that? Allahu Akbar. So here comes the day of Valentine's and, and the flowers came. I told you the flowers are supposed to come anytime, not only when you go to the graveyard. Sorry, I need to explain myself. You know, at the graveyard, you get these roses on people's graves. Sometimes the people put, you know, we in Islam, we're not supposed to be doing that. You'd rather make a dua for the deceased than to do that. But some people, when they go to the graveyard and they're standing there, they see a rose. Hey, that's good for my wife. Take it. So the only time they get roses, you know, one woman says, every time my husband gives me a rose, I've got to ask him, did you pass by the graveyard? <laughs> So the reality here is there was a case and this happens and I'm talking about it because it's connected to the knot. There was a case where a man says he came with the flowers. The flowers are presented. Now there's another problem. What's it? Where did you get these from? Who sent them to you? How did you bring them here? If I don't bring them, there's a problem. If I bring them, there's a problem. Allahu Akbar. What do I do? May Allah help us really learn to appreciate. Like I said, you don't need to probe every detail. If you are kind and good towards your spouse and you give them time and you look at them often, trust me, the love will increase. If you are kind and good to your spouse and you, you have good words to say, you have time for them, you look at them often, you talk to them often with good words, trust me, the love will increase. They won't need to go onto the phone in order to find love. They have it at home. There's no deficit, nothing at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, really. By all means, may Allah make dua, ask Allah's help and work towards it. A beautiful topic this evening, mashallah, tying the knot. You see, I want to mention something important. When tying the knot in Islam, it's very easy. It is simplified. The reason why it's simplified, one of the reasons people must not have an excuse to say, I committed adultery fornication because it was very difficult to get married. Brings me to an interesting point. To delay marriage in Islam is actually prohibited. Once you know that the two are to get married, you get the nikah done. You delaying it, you are sinful. Remember this. So people say, we are engaged. The next year I met them, we are engaged. The third year I met them, we are engaged. The fourth year, oh, she fell pregnant, we had to quickly do the nikah. It's happening in society. They were supposed to be married, get the nikah done, even if they are living separately. So what? Who said that as soon as you marry, you have to go to your husband's house 
If your father has agreed that no problem, you're still at school, you want to finish your education, get your nikah done and stay at home. Don't worry. The day we are finished with your education four or five years down, inshallah, you can go to your husband's house and we can have a big walima that time, inshallah. No harm. But with us, we say, no, 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 keep it. What am I going to say? Son doesn't have a degree. Son-in-law doesn't have a degree. What am I going to say? No, hold it. No marriage. You must wait. They are already together. They are already together. And who is accumulating the sin? You are a part of it. A part of it. I'm not saying the entire sin, but you are a part of it. Why? You are a stubborn parent. That's what it is. Stubborn, really stubborn. Take that out. Learn from the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, where he teaches us when Nikah is confirmed, get it done. When the time of Salah comes, fulfill it. When the Janazah happens to be in front of you, get them buried. You don't delay a Janazah to say, you know what? Uh, let's just wait for one, two years. Put him in the mortuary. Why? You know, more people will come, you know. What are you talking about? That's what you're doing to your daughter. That's what you're doing to your son-in-law. Allah forgive us. Get the Nikah done. Do you fear Allah or do you fear society? Get that nikah done. Don't delay. The two want to get married. Come on, let it happen. And they don't have to live together. Like I said, they, tomorrow when he's got a house, he can come ahead. Mashallah. Qualification, degree, subhanallah. Some of the happiest marriages are to those who have no degree. Trust me. Some of the happiest marriages are to those who have no qualification. The man treats your daughter like she is a queen. He carries her on his back and walks around. Mashallah, a guy with a degree. One wonders, I don't want to say won't do that, but one wonders what he does. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You're talking to me like this. I have a degree. Mashallah, PhD, me PhD. You know, the, he'll tell his wife to call him doctor so-and-so. I have a PhD. You don't address me like that. May Allah forgive us, really. You look at the man, if his deen is good, his character is good, reasonable, responsible person, get him married. How many of our parents had nothing when they got married? 30 years later, they developed wealth. Today, the same parents want a husband who's already rich. He must be rich from the beginning. Give him a chance. Come on, man. When you got married, you couldn't even wear shoes. You only used to move around in slippers. Allahu Akbar and it took you 20, 30 years to develop wealth and just because you've got the wealth, your daughter wants to get married. It's not like anyone is shoving it down her throat and you are just saying no because perhaps the man doesn't have something and who said, Allah says, You've chosen the right spouse. If the person is poor, Allah will bless them with his virtue because Allah is the one who owns sustenance. How many people have got their daughters married to wealthy people? Ten years down the line, they lost everything. So it's not to do with wealth. It's to do with the right person. And this is why the hadith says there are several things people look at. Some look at wealth. Some look at looks. Your choice. Yes, you must look at what the person looks like. Definitely. You have to live with them. At the end of the day, you have to be intimate with them. You're not going to go with those masks that they give out on Emirates and, and then, you know, be intimate with your spouse. No, you want to look at them. You want to see them. Yes, so you must be able to like your spouse, definitely. But your decision must not be based solely on looks. There must be an overriding factor. What is it? It's not got to do only with the lineage. No, you can't marry them. They're not from our family. They're not from our tribe. They're not from our caste. They're not from this side. They're not exactly, you know, so and so. No. Are they Muslim? Are they decent people? Do they have character? Let it go. Allahu Akbar. Let it happen. Do not be a person from the pagan days of ignorance. You know, Bilal ibn Rabah and his brother, radiallahu anhumah, they got to the community and they said, we are whom you know we are. If you are going to allow us to marry your daughters, alhamdulillah. If not, Allah will provide. Wallahi, they looked. Bilal ibn Rabah, a man from Africa, subhanallah. A man whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I heard his footsteps in paradise. It shook the people. They immediately got them married. That shows us that it's got to do with the nobility of a person. Look at the status of a person. You know, I've heard of people say, no, this man is a little bit too dark for my daughter to get married to. Come on. You can be as dark as charcoal. But if your daughter is up in the air, Alhamdulillah, she's happy. She's excited. What's the point of marrying the most handsome man, the wealthiest man, and your daughter is crying every night and she's cursing you. My dad did something very bad. I'll never forgive him. When you die, you are receiving the sin of what happened. Allahu Akbar. Why should that happen? 
This is the reality of why knots are being broken today. We want to tie it correctly. Well, understand the hadith says, yes, you may look at what she looks like. You may want to look at her status, her lineage. You may want to look at everything. Those are not the deciding factors. The deciding factor is deen. You want to be successful. You want victory. You want success in the dunya and the akhirah. Then succeed by marrying the one who has the consciousness of Allah in her or the consciousness of Allah in him. That is success. May Allah bless us all, really. And sometimes we ignore that the environment has actually affected our child. Listen carefully. Sometimes we ignore the fact that the environment has affected our child. So the child comes up with their own proposition and we get upset and angry. I don't want. You know what? Talk to your child. Try and convince them. Listen to their story. Lend them an ear. You do not want them to do things behind your back. You are not Allah. Lend them an ear. My daughter, what happened? How do you know this guy? Don't just get angry. I will fix you up. I'm going to damage you. Be careful. No way. That's not how you talk to your daughter. Because tomorrow when she marries, what will happen? What example have you laid? You speak to her with respect. She is a human being. Before she belonged to you, she is and was Allah's. Always Allah's. You will perhaps die leaving her behind to live for decades after you. She belongs to Allah. Inna lillahi. The Quran doesn't say inna li abaina. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and unto Him is our return. The hadith didn't say we belong to our fathers and our forefathers and unto Him, unto them is our return. No. Yes, we may. We have to be kind. Allah chose our parents for us indeed. But remember one thing. You speak to your children. You listen to what they have to say. They will then tell you, you know, dad, I went to the varsity. And I saw a guy reading his salah all the time. And I saw this and I saw that. And for some reason, somehow I developed feelings for this young man. Please give him a chance. Talk to him. You say, okay, let me talk to him. I am not encouraging this type of behavior, but I'm saying it is happening. Face it. If you have not involved in the lives of your children a lot, then this type of thing will keep on happening. But those parents who've involved a lot, their children tell them a lot of what goes on in their lives. Alhamdulillah, they will be able to guide their children. You know, if your son says, hey, today we saw the uncle was smoking and he threw the stub on the floor and a few of us picked it up and we were checking it out. And you look at him and say, son, be careful. Watch out. That's not what is what's supposed to happen. Perhaps he will talk to you more and more. But if you tell him what and you lift him up and you pump him one, wallahi, he's never going to talk to you again. He's never going to because he knows my dad is mad, man. Really, you tell him something, he'll, he'll destroy you completely. He's punched me in my, my, my belly and so on. Some of the country's people go and report their parents. May Allah forgive us. So this is why we say, if the person, if your daughter has come up with something of this nature, perhaps you must listen to what they have to say. Meet the man to talk to him. He might be better than all the options you've ever thought about. It doesn't mean that he, she has to marry the son of your business partner. No. Marriage is not a business deal in Islam. Not at all. People say, no, 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 no. I thought this son must marry. Those are the marriages. Sometimes they don't work because you know why? The girl was forced. You forced your daughter to marry someone whose father forced him to marry her. So they were both forced on either side. They sleep like a divorced couple from day one. What's happening? Whose fault is it? Both parents. Literally silly people. People who didn't think. People who thought that, you know what? I can do. And, and this is me. And Allah has given me the right. It is haram, haram, haram. It is prohibited to force your daughter to marry someone. Totally prohibited. You cannot force. You can suggest. You can say, look, what about this? And what about that option? She has the right to say, I do not want. It's over. Did you hear that? She has the right. She is entitled to say, I do not want. And you have to surrender because she belongs to Allah before she came to you. Same applies to your sons. No forcing. And you know, a man is he who can say to the father of the girl that, look, I'm being forced. Or... The girl says, I'm being forced. Speak up. Don't come up 10 years down the line and say, I never wanted to marry you. I was forced by my dad. It's happening a lot. Don't do that. Say it in advance. That look, I have a problem. I'm not ready to marry. Please, they are forcing me to do this. You help me. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. My brothers and sisters, it's a vast topic. If you notice, I have tried to tackle the problems of society. What we are facing across the globe in the Muslim Ummah. We have this crisis. People have not understood. I give you another example. Someone reverts to Islam. We get very happy, don't we? A person reverts to Islam. Mashallah, this guy from Germany has accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah. We are so excited because he became a Muslim. Do you know that they are finding it very difficult to get married? Because of our backwardness. No one's marrying because when it comes to marriage, no, no, no. But he is cleaner and purer than others who've committed sin and so on. Inna al-Islam ma qabla. You look at him, if he's dedicated and he's good and his, his ideas are correct and his perhaps beliefs are within the line and so on, you, you, there is nothing wrong in offering him your daughter. Nothing wrong. In Islam, it can happen either way. But no, he's a revert. He's Caucasian or revert. These people were Hindus before. Brother, your great grandfather was a Hindu as well. Allahu Akbar. What about that? These people were Buddhist. So what? They accepted Islam. We have a, a crisis in the Ummah. That is a huge crisis. So many people who reverted to Islam, they are stronger than born Muslims. And we say, no, I won't want my daughter to marry here. We are not saying you need to shove it down anyone's throat. But what we are saying, if there is an interest and if the person is a candidate, let it be. So what? Nationality means nothing. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. The world is now a little global village. You know, people are in touch with, with each other and they promise each other to marry. If you were, and I'm repeating it for the third time, if you were close enough to your child before they promised someone that they would marry them, they would have told you, they would have asked you, they would have involved you. But because you were too distant with your friends and your nightlife and what else and everything else, some people are too distant. Some people are so religious that it becomes sacrilegious. You know what that means? To serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely something good. But to go beyond the limit to the degree that the other obligations on your shoulders, you have foregone them, you have left them. It's an obligation for you to do this and you have not done it. In that particular case, what's the point of a man who goes to the masjid and spends the whole day in the masjid whilst his family are looking at other men in order to resolve their matters and to go and buy something for them and look after their needs. What's the point? So you need to strike a balance. Nobody is saying don't go to the masjid. You need to go, but you must know when you need to depart. When your family needs you, you need to talk to them. You need to meet them. You need to look after them. That's also a duty. It is far as well. It is a duty obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us all. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that all the marriages that we have, really, that they work on this solid foundation. May Allah help us to help one another. May Allah help us to resolve our problems. All those who are not married, Ya Allah, get them married to spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Ya Allah, all those who are married and are suffering turbulence, help them such that they can resolve their matters tonight. Ya Allah, all those who are struggling in any way, Ya Allah, help them. Ya Allah, those who are in-laws, fathers-in-law, mother-in-law, Ya Allah, help them to be the best that they can, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to have the homes that are the greatest and full of harmony and peace. Help us be role models to our children, Ya Allah. Those who don't have children, bless them with offspring. Those who do, make them the coolness of their eyes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless us all, grant us all every form of goodness, Ya Allah. Accept us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.